Hi, welcome to language curriculum class and in today's lesson we are going to learn about the Philippine curriculum development and of course under the course language curriculum in secondary schools and specifically our objectives for this lesson is first we have to trace the historical foundations of the curriculum development in the Philippines Second, identify the different curriculum models used in the Philippines and of course, evaluate the key features of language curriculum in the Philippines. But in this particular segment, we are uh, going to trace the historical foundations of curriculum development in the Philippines. All right. Before tracing the historical foundations of the curriculum in our country, we have to know first, what is really curriculum development? Or what does it mean? All right. So according to Purita Bilbao et al., curriculum development is defined as the process of selecting, organizing, executing, and evaluating learning experiences on the basis of the needs, abilities, and interests of the learners and the nature of the society and the community they belong. All right, so you have to take note the process of selecting and then you have to organize what you have selected and execute uh, what you have organized and then evaluate what has been executed in order for us to really validate if we have this um, strong curriculum. Uh, talking about the processes, it includes uh, the processes that are used in uh, determining the needs of the learners and then it is also to develop the aims and objectives for the program uh, to answer those needs and of course to determine the appropriate syllabus or course structure, the teaching method and the teaching materials to be used in the teaching and learning process. Now, maybe another question would come to your mind. Why do we need to have this curriculum development? Why do we need to change our curriculum every now and then? Or what are the motives of curriculum development? Of course, we have the first one, religion. Religion would always affect the curriculum. Okay, knowing it's, um, when you talk about the foundation of curriculum later, uh, we can uh, see that religion really affects uh, the curriculum uh, development because in the education in the curriculum there is this reflection of the religious belief of this particular um, country or particular group of learners next to that is political whoever in the position um, would always affect the educational um, system would always uh, affect and how we organize our curriculum and of course the third one we have this uh, utilitarian reasons okay we revise the curriculum we need to develop curriculum for practicality purposes uh, for functionality purposes or uh, responding to the economic needs for rationality purposes all right for mass education okay education is for all that's why we have to um, there is this development of the curriculum uh, because we want everybody can experience it everybody will have this uh, meaningful experience of the curriculum and the last one we are doing a lot of revisions we are having this curriculum development curriculum is constantly evolving because we want to achieve this excellence in education we want to be at par of the other countries for us to compete in the global market that's why we are constantly doing uh, we are constantly developing constantly upgrading the curriculum in order for us to attain uh, that one the excellence in education okay so in attaining the excellence of education we have to know where we begin Okay, we, we have to know our foundation uh, for us to understand what is the present. Okay, kailangan natin pag-aralan ang kasaysayan upang maintindihan natin kung ano ang mga nangyayari dito ngayon sa kasalukuyan. Alright, so this time let's have a short on throwback on the curriculum development in the Philippines. Okay, let's have the historical foundations of curriculum development in the philippines why do we need to study it because it reflects the educational focus prevalent or present during the period in the philippine history and of course the focus could be basis 
or model for the curriculum development of the recent years. Again, we have to understand our foundation uh, for us to really um, understand what we are having in this present time. Okay, so to start with, all right, so we have here the pre Spanish uh, period. This happened before 1521, all right? So the barangay played a major role on how our early Filipinos were being educated. What the barangay already practiced and believed in were passed from generation to generation. Then the curriculum was then unsystematic. It is unplanned and sponta uh, spontaneous because the aims of education during the time were uh, for survival, for conformity, and for enculturation. The type of education during the time, during uh, the pre-Spanish time, was really informal. For practical training, for conformity, and for survival purposes. So, they followed the code of Kalanshaw and Maragtas. Uh, they believed in Bathala and other Diosan. And then, obedience and respect our elders. That's our atatak as pagiging Filipino, being respectful to our elders. The medium of instruction during the time was Alibata or Baybayin, uh, conducted by the Babaylan, or they term it as tribal tutors. So, aside from the parents, um, they had uh, their um, tutor or tribal tutor called Babaylan. So, if you have watched um, Bagani or Amaya, so maybe you can relate to that Babaylan and more or less in your history subjects as well. That happened before 1521. Uh, we already had our education, but it was not formal plainly for uh, survival, okay? And we had also this writing system called Alibata or Baybayin. From the years 1521 to 1896, or we term that one as Spanish regime in our country, that is for more, more than 300, to be exact, 375 years, they were in the country, okay? So when Spain began to colonize Philippines, the Spanish missionaries played a major role in how our early Filipinos were educated. Religion was the tool Spain wielded to make Philippines its colony. So if you have remembered, when you were taking your history classes, we have these three Gs in colonizing our uh, country. We have the God, the gold, and then the glory. All right? During this time, the curriculum was then a lot more structured. So we have now this structured curriculum uh, compared to what the Filipinos had before. But the emphasis was on religion rather than the basic skills for survival. Okay, the aims of education during the time were uh, to promote Christianity, okay, the G, the God, or the religion, and Spanish language. But technically, um, this is not really uh, true because uh, Spanish language is only used for uh, by uh, the fully blooded Spanish, the Peninsulares and Insulares. So when we say Insulares, um, those Spanish, fully blooded Spanish who were born in the Philippines or in its colony. And then for Peninsulares, Spanish, fully blooded Spanish born in Europe and then living in uh, the colony. So living in the Philippines, okay? And then for elite uh, Filipino people. The type of education was formal religious education. The medium of instruction that was used during the time was Spanish. But then again, Spanish was only used for the fully blooded Spanish and for the elite. But for the Filipino students or normal Filipino students, they were uh, using vernacular. Okay? They were not taught Spanish at, at all. There were discriminations to our Filipino students during the time. One of it, they were not allowed to speak the Spanish language. During the time of the Spaniards in our country, the University of Santo Tomas was established in 1611. 
Okay, just take note of that one. Where the different um, discrimination that our early Filipinos suffered under the Spanish government, uh, the Filipino um, rebelled against Spain, and that's the beginning of the American regime in our country from 1898 to 1935. All right, America began its reigns to our can in our country. All right. The 600 Thomasites played a major role as to how the early Filipinos were educated. Okay, who were the Thomasites? They were the U.S. teachers, were teachers from the United States of America who traveled to Philippines, um, boarded the ship USS Thomas. The curriculum then evolved into a more organized, systematic, and academic and scale focused dynamism. The aims of education during the time uh, were to teach democracy. Uh, there was a separation of state and church and then establishment of the public school system. Okay, during the time, it promoted the democratic ideas and way of life. Okay, and the type of education during the American regime or the American period in our country was formal, which focuses on three R's, the good moral and right conduct, hygiene, sanitation, and English as a medium of instruction. All right, and talking about the type of education, it has seven years of elementary education, four years in primary and three years for intermediate, and we have the secondary and the tertiary uh, education. The Education Act of 1901, the Philippine Normal School, now Philippine Normal University, was founded. And in 1908, the University of the Philippines was founded. So, Filipino teachers can teach. From 1935 to 1946, when the Philippines was then beginning to prepare for its independence from America, Sabisa ng Tidings McDuffie Act uh, and the expansion and reformation of the Philippine curriculum began this period. Again, Filipino teachers uh, were empowered to improve the curriculum and as a result, um, content rich on culture specific courses were added because the aim um, of education or the aims of education during the Commonwealth period from 1935 to 1946 were to develop a moral character uh, to have this vocational efficiency and preparation for independence so pagtayo ng ating mga sariling paa alright so with that Patriotism was then added uh, as an important factor in the Philippine curriculum, okay? So the type of education during the Commonwealth period was formal and vocational education. And during this time as well, there were eight regional normal schools were formed. And one of it, Cebu. Normal school, now Cebu Normal University, okay? And then elementary were reduced to six years from seven years. And then with the entry of seven years old and grade one during the Commonwealth period was, a, uh, was compulsory, okay? Again, grade one was compulsory. And then the medium of instruction was Filipino. And Filipino subjects were introduced as well. So um, this was the time. Commonwealth period was the time that we put our own tatak as Filipino. Okay, this was the time of our uh, ama, no sariling wika, no uh, pangulong Manuel L. Quezon. Okay. With our uh, with our reformation in the educational system preparing for uh, for independence, we have this one tap. Okay, the growth of the Philippine curriculum was stunted because of the Jap uh, Japanese invasion in our country. That happened in 1941 to 1944. They tried to erase every influence of American in the entire society especially in the entire philippine society especially in the philippine curriculum 
And then during the time of the Japanese, the aims of education were this one, love of labor, because that is, is their tatak until now, in military training. Japan, uh, in the present time, Japan has this strong military defense. And then the type of education was really formal education and vocational. Okay, and the medium of instruction that was used during the Japanese period was Nihongo. Okay, their national language. And then English was totally ab abolished during the time because they were trying to really erase every American influence to the Filipinos. And during the Japanese period, this is termed as the blackout of the Philippine education. Why blackout of the Philippine education? Everything was revised. Okay, all the books were censored, all the books were um, revised and even burned. So again, the Japanese period was termed to be the blackout in the Philippine education, and not just in the Philippine education, also in the entire, okay, especially during the time of desperation that they were about to lose the battle. So they burned houses, they raped women and others, and one of the victims of the Japanese was our former president, uh, Elpidio Quirino, his family was massacred, okay? But then again, the late president, Elpidio Quirino, forgave, okay, the Japanese, okay? And then he's the only Filipino that has um that has a monument in Japan. Okay, so that's that's a trivia. So after the war, of course there were destructions. Then after the war, Philippines started to rebuild again, to build, to stand again, to re. Uh, to recuperate and began mod modernizing especially in the education so that's what we term as a liberation period okay during the liberation period it is from 1944 to 1946 for two years the aims of education were morality responsibility uh, helping the community and cultural heritage and the type of education was formal and vocational and this time the medium of instruction was filipino language okay to really improve our curriculum the researches were conducted so during the philippine third republic from 1946 to 1972 research then became more prevalent and is greatly uh, and it greatly helped in the facilitating in facilitating the expansion and improvement in the Philippine curriculum. Okay, so the aims of education during the time uh, were about the appreciation of culture, the preservation of cultural heritage, and the use of Filipino books and literature. And of course, we have this one: bilingualism type of education we have formal education and vocational education the largely traditional curriculum then become more colored following its progressive uh, methodology and mindset okay so the medium of instruction was filipino language and other foreign languages especially english as well and that uh, that includes english language all right so from 1972 to the new society that's basic education curriculum the aims of education during um the time were the love of country duties of the citizenship and self-discipline and the type of education is formal and uh, vocational so the late president marcus issued the educational decree of 1972 Okay, which um, greatly added to the development of the, uh, of the Philippine curriculum and heavily articulated the need to teach again nationalism, nationalism, patriotism, moral values, and relevant academic courses. The medium of instruction during the time was Filipino and other languages, that includes English, and this time graduate studies were being incorporated in the curriculum when say graduate studies we counted the masters the, pro, gra, the doctor uh, studies the postgraduate studies okay 
and then uh, we have here the implementation of the flag ceremony or the heraldic code so as you can see we are constantly progressing we are constantly uh, developing or improving the curriculum in order for us to fit in the needs of our society of the needs in the society and in the global market as well all right as the philippines continues to witness the result of all the underpinnings the researches and the happenings and uh, the happenings internationally and locally a more developed and globally competitive curriculum would naturally make itself known that's what we call k plus 12 curriculum or the, the k to 12 curriculum or the enhanced basic education program from 2012 up to present all right the implementation of the k plus 12 system is the product of the need to compete with the international standards okay going back to the motive uh, motives of curriculum development the last one the excellence in education so we ha are now having this k plus 12 program in order for us to compete in the global market in order for us to be at par with other uh, pr uh, with other nationalities and with other people outside philippines so that's why we have this k plus 12 program now as you can see our curriculum started from the very and structured and we are now having this k plus 12 so you can see the progress okay that is the goal of the curriculum development to really have this progressive curriculum productive curriculum a good curriculum in order to have this mass education and excellence in education as the result so that's the foundation, the historical foundations of the curriculum development in the Philippines. In the next session, we will be talking on what are the different curriculum models that our country uh, used, okay, starting from 1972 up until the present time. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening in this segment, and I hope to see you in the next segment.